Hey, today's episode's with Mike Love from Coffee Labs. You know that place. It's that place with the best coffee ever. Mike runs Coffee Labs in Tarrytown and now East Chester with his wife, Alicia, and they're just pillars of the community. Listen to the interview, which I recorded live and then later edited so it's not live anymore. Inside of the East Chester spot, there's a lot of things going on. Coffee's being made. Milk is being frothed. Orders are being placed. A lot of shit is being done, and Mike is not mic'd. But you can hear everything, and this man knows his coffee. What's poppin', Westchester? This is the Westchester Pop. Chester, Mike Love, we're at Coffee Labs in East Chester. Let me take you inside. What's up, man? Hanging out, having coffee. Yeah. There's a lot of coffee places in Westchester, obviously. What makes you guys stand out and why I will tolerate Tarrytown's parking situation um, is because you guys are the real deal. And, uh, I mean, you've literally traveled around the world to find the best coffee. Talk to me a little bit about, first of all, happy belated 20th birthday. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you're going to be 21 soon. Yep. So you can drink. So, uh, yeah, legally. Officially. Yeah. That's nice. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, Coffee Labs, how it started. Cliff Notes, 20 years is a long time for a podcast, but... Yep. But, you know, how it started, and we're sitting here in your East Chester spot that you opened uh, basically on your 20th anniversary. So talk yes. to me a little bit about it. So this is, we'll be 21 in May, and basically, you know, we opened this up with the thought process of serving the best coffee we could and following the same path that I followed as a chef, really. It was understanding where your products come from and being able to tell the story behind your products. And that meant a whole lot. And the coffee industry and coffee farmers, it's, people need to pay attention. This is not a endless tap of liquid that just appears. So we really kind of focused on building farm relationships, with all our farmers, we've had relationships with most of our farmers for almost, some of them minimum 10 years, some of them going on 12, so it's been, a, it's been a good ride. What makes us different, I think, is the dedication to quality, from the greases all the way down to the sourcing of the coffee at Origins. When you were setting out to do a coffee shop, um, did you know from the outset that it was going to be not just simply a coffee shop that you were going to be the quote unquote best and what i mean by the best like authentic real yeah so there was the concept that you're going to serve food or you're going to do soups salads and sandwiches and in my eyes like a coffee house was a coffee house it wasn't a cafe it wasn't a bistro we do what we do, and if you wanted food, there was other places that you could get it. We just wanted to focus on finding the best possible coffee that we could find at the level that we were at 20 years ago. Now is a little different story as far as quality. You know, some of the relationships we have are extremely exclusive with those farmers, and we're the only ones that have that coffee. Some we share with other with other coffee roasters around the country and on, across the globe. So I think that's really what separates us is being able to not only talk about the coffee, but talk about the families, the farmers, the people that have the hands on, on the ground all the time with this coffee. And that is, they're the reason why I'm actually here. It's not because I serve great coffee. I have people that supply me with amazing coffees. So we're the last hand that really touches this coffee. So technically, you can find the best coffee if you don't do the right thing with it once it's in your hands. You can screw the whole process up. Great. And talk to me a little bit about the relationship you have with these farmers. So the relationships I've, I have, I mean, I guess I could talk about Aida Batli and El Salvador, who I've been dealing with and friends with for a, over a dozen years now. Um, we just went to dinner in Chicago. 
separate when we were all at a trade show. Raul Rivera, um, also a Salvadorian farmer, been with him 10 years. Roni Herrera and the entire Herrera family, 11 years this year. So I, I've watched the families and farms grow, innovations happen, new equipment, growth and processing with these farmers. And some of them, I've watched, like the Herrera family, it was a small farm. They were corn producing a ton of coffee, and now they've grown exponentially. And their cousins are involved and uncles are involved. So it's just, these relationships are just, they're important to me, number one. These are not just people that I talk to and sign contracts with. These are people that I spend you know, a week or two with when I go visit. These are people that visit our shop and my home in New York. So a lot of, some of the farmers have come and gone as COVID happens, business models sometimes don't work, but generally the bulk of our relationships have been 10 years plus. Talking about um, growth and industry and stuff like that, Talk to me about your own growth uh, in terms of moving into Eastchester and and also just rewinding a little bit the importance that you have in Tarrytown. And when, when I think of coffee, I always think of like community and I think about uh, just the, the social component of coffee and how it brings people together. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, your part of Tarrytown. And when, when I see you, I also... This is going to come out totally wrong, but it's complimentary. I just want to—I just want to preface the sentence that I'm about to say. It sounds completely awful, but it's a compliment. When when I see you, I think back to COVID, and I'll explain why. Um, during COVID, when all businesses are trying to survive, as I'm sure you were, yep. what I think about is you um, making runs to the hospitals. That's what I think. Because um, I placed an order and, and yep. sent something. But that's not to make me feel special by saying it. It's just the fact that you were there and you were doing that. what was going on at the time. Yeah. But, but, you know, while you were trying to survive, you were also doing good. And I know that you do a lot, you know, for the community in Tarrytown and beyond in Westchester. Talk to me a little bit. Uh, any of the things in my run-on long question that I threw at you. So I guess personal growth, I mean, personal growth, yes. We've been around 20 years, people, well, you should have this many stores, or you should have done this. Well, maybe you should have opened up a business and done it yourself instead of making suggestions about what I should have done. <laughs> uh, honestly, it was about finding the right people to grow with, internally and externally. Um, we had a few false starts on different projects, and those are obviously never came to fruition, but they were experiences that helped us get to where we are within the East Chester now. Um, it's been an interesting growth period, I think, for both Alicia and I, and Coffee Labs, and growing the business, and trying to do different things, and working on different projects now as we're talking there's i need we need to keep people and we, when we found this location it was just it kind of came together in the right way between you now the contracting that was a little bit weird because that took forever because we had to fire one guy but when it all came together it came together because everyone was on the same page and the same vision so this shop i have no complaints about the growth so far, I mean, we're in August, so we're, what, six, seven months in? Can't complain about the business. I think it's, this shop is totally different than Terrytown, where that you see the relationship of coffee with us, because we roast coffee, the green beans. Here tells the story of the relationship, because of all the coffee wood that we reclaim from Columbia, from one of our farms that we work with and the lighting that we did in here so this is a different take and it's just a different model than what we have in terry County because we don't roast here this is about the coffee the relationship and just a nice open airy space to enjoy and covid that was that was an interesting friggin time wow um 
I don't know, a lot of things happened with COVID. We were fortunate enough to be able to stay open because we were considered food manufacturing because we roast coffee and we supplied grocery chains. So if we had just been a regular shop, we would have had no clothes because we weren't a necessity to the food chain process. I know that sounds crazy, coffee, but it is. Um, so that's what allowed us to stay open and maintain the business. The boxes and the hospitals and stuff, that was basically people would call us and we'd donate. It's like 75 bucks and you got three boxes of coffee and you know mugs and all the fixings and brought that to hospitals and that's what I did kind of giving back because nobody could really go out for coffee I didn't want to go out but just things need to be done and it was a way for us to kind of give back to people that were helping to give back to everybody else um, you know we did like we do a lot of stuff and a lot of the charity and donation is just stuff we do because we just believe in it we don't really post about it because it's not that's not why you do it it's not why we do it at right. all so right. you know it took us forever to to really put it prominent that we're green restaurant associations you know certified and we do different sustainable things. It was just what we believed in. People were like, well, you gotta tell people. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll tell people. But I still, it's just one of those things. If you believe in it, you just do it, and the benefits hopefully show at some point. Right, and and the benefit is doing it. The yeah. Ben, the benefit is not people pointing and saying, oh, no, look what they're doing. Nope. Right. Yep. What's it? mean to you to to have lasted so long in Tarrytown? Um, I mean, you're kind of synonymous with Tarrytown. Yeah. Like, when I think of Tarrytown, I think of the music hall, I think of the shitty parking, sorry. Yep, and, totally shitty parking. <laughs> and I think of Coffee Labs. I mean, that's the first three things that pop well, you up. Got, you know, and uh, it, there's a lot of others. I mean, we... When it, the music hall was there when we got there, obviously. Yeah. But when we got there, there was nothing. There was no mint. There was no eatery. There was no little bees. There was none of it. It was empty stores and antique shops that opened, you know, every now and then. People were like, do it in Terrytown, do it in Terrytown. Up and coming, it's up and coming. And we saw that, and we took the chance on it. And we were right on that one, and so was everyone else. You know, and I think that was, you always need one or two businesses. You know, the Greek restaurant was there. Yeah. Santa Fe at the time was, had been there for, you know, almost 20 years at that time. And that was a staple. Like, everyone knew, like, Santa Fe, Tex-Mex, that's where you went. Um, and there were some places, but after GM closed, City Hall of Terrytown kind of just fell off. And there were still those staples. The Greek restaurant was there. You know, and I think you need a couple new people to come in with fresh ideas in a town like Terrytown was, and other towns still are, to kind of say, all right, I see it, I like it, I'm going to do it here. And then after we opened, Hassan and Alberta opened up Mint. And that was amazing for the town. And then um, Jill, who's since passed away, but she had Chaboost, a little French patisserie, which mm -hmm. was absolutely outstanding. So I think that's really what helped kicked it off, was myself, Mint, you know, the handful of other businesses around, you know, Brewed on Nine, before it was the tap, like, mm -hmm. when Billy... You know, no one was really doing craft beers at the time, and like Billy had a crazy selection of craft beers and was doing amazing cocktails. And it just kind of kept rolling from there. Now Terrytown, it all the river towns are great. A lot, they all have different aspects that make them special. But as far as Terrytown, just has like a vibe about it. Of, a, of the other river towns where there's more walking traffic on a more consistent basis. Terrytown has the draw because of the historic aspects of it. And it's a cool town. We've got a lot of great food, a lot of great venues to come check out while you're in Terrytown. So I, that was really, I think, the biggest draw. So much was around. 
And then 2004 or five, they started, you know, Stone Barns, Blue Hill. Yeah. That just changed the whole entire. Yep. That just changed the whole entire area. Just now you have one of the best restaurants, you know, come to be one of the best restaurants and most noted chefs in the entire country, right in our backyard. Right. Terrytown has come a long way, and it's. Yeah, it's, it keeps growing and growing in different ways. Some good, some bad, but that's what happens with time and change. You're not going to like everything, but I wouldn't have changed anything as far as where we would have chose to open, you know, Coffee Labs at the first go. So let me ask you this. You now have two spots, and people are probably, like me, obnoxious, and they're asking you if you're plotting a third. Yes. Are you plotting a third? Yes. Uh, you want to tell a small podcast that's just getting started where you're opening? Uh, and nothing is official, but we're looking at two different spots, um, one a little bit more local than the other. Okay. Um, so until anything, like, I'd love to say, but it seems like when you say where it's going to be or what it's going to be when it's actually not in black and white, oh, sure. yeah, it seems to just... Well, you jinx it, right? Yeah. Well, I, I believe that too. But you know what else happens too is uh, then I feel like you delay the inevitable sometimes. So like even if it's happening, then you get people like asking you anything happened, anything happened, and then it feels like it's even further along, you know, further so, down the road than it really is. Yes. So we're looking at a third shop. We will look at a fourth and fifth shop. Um, that right now as far as that's about as far as we're looking ahead okay third shop is in the works looking at two different locations and then potentially you know breaking the company into another division which will be a beverage division because we're in the process, the beginning process is uh, process authority, formulation, co-packing for can all of our drinks that you would get. Nice. Awesome. The bar, but in a shelf-stable format. That you get. Cool. So. Uh, side note, how is it working with your wife all these years? Sucks. Yeah? No. It's, it's <laughs> honestly, like, we didn't know. That's a whole other thing. It's like work with your spouse and your partner yeah. and it's like you're with them all the time yeah then you're home with them right. and you vacation with them and then you shop with it. it's so when we did this we actually took classes within our industry like there was a couple classes that we took on how to work with your spouse and certain things you need to have in place it's been great we both do very different things within the business and meet in the middle to work on stuff that we need to work on stuff together but it's been great you know we kind of stay in our own lanes after all the years we kind of know who stays in what lane and where we need to turn when we need to turn um i guess the key is to have fun with it like really and that's the biggest thing just remember to have fun like when you go home that's little time is going to be overlapping of work right Stuff How can like you not that? take yeah. life home with you, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So, but then you know, I think the gr- one of the greatest things, in like, and this is gonna sound like super dorky, but yeah. we sit home and we do a crossword puzzle together, and that's that's kind of like, great. and it keeps our brains active, but it keeps us like engaged and like joking around. Because, you know, it's not always serious when you're doing a crossword puzzle. There's always some fun, weird kind of right. words that go in there. It's been interesting, but it's great. I wouldn't trade it. And definitely wouldn't want anyone else as a partner because I don't play well with others, really, and neither does she. So we like our own sandbox. So you're talking about, like, shops three, four, five, six. So so I'm ruled out automatically as a future partner. Is that what and that best thing is fine. Partnership is a whole nother Well, thing. I have no money, so I well, should have a lot you're of out. Keep buying coffee, man. <laughs> I'll just drink this. What is the best thing about coffee? Just just in general, what would you say? If someone was like, why coffee? 
And you can interpret that any way you want it. Why coffee? It could be drinking it, getting in this field, it could be anything. I think coffee was, for me, we had to roast coffee. To just make cups of coffee, I would have never, ever have lasted this long. Just wouldn't have. I have an art degree, I'm artistic, I'm culinary, motiv culinarily mo motivated and inspired by stuff. So roasting was the major component because it was another culinary outlet for me. It was preparing dishes for people, but not the stress of the restaurant. Um, so I think that that's really how that came about. It, it was, I needed to do something to express my creativity and to give people, like to see to look, there's nothing that I enjoy more like than cooking for people and watching them. I'll never take a bite until everyone else has started eating. It's just I want to see everyone's look. I want to see that excitement. And the same about coffee. So that's kind of, I think that on yeah. I'm kind of a coffee snob. I have to have really good coffee. Although I am not going to lie, if there's a Starbucks nearby and I have to kill three hours, I'm going to go there. But it happens. What is your coffee preference? You know, obviously you have coffee here, but like, what's your favorite cup of coffee? You know, and are you a coffee snob? Yes and no. Like, I, I see people and I know people in the industry that will literally take a sip of espresso and like just throw it away. Really? Like, I'll never do that in front of another coffee <laughs> shop. Yeah. I will take a sip, smile, and like talk about it and walk out and yeah. find the closest garbage can. Yes, I'm a snob. Obviously, when you travel, you're not always going to find a great cup. And, you know, sometimes Starbucks at an airport when you're in the middle of nowhere is what your option is. Right. I, when I go places, I try to source out either people that I know or shops that have a great reputation or other people have suggested it. And yeah, I have a list. I don't travel with all the coffee gear anymore. Like it, at one time, I would try to snot, you know, the, the grinder, the Hario, the kettle. The, it was just, it was a whole process to bring yeah. everything. And now I'm like, no, I can't do that. Oh, I would I love just, to see you unpack some of the rest of it. So now it's just like, <laughs> I did bring a grinder to Chicago because we had okay. a coffee maker in the house with no grinder. So. Okay. Um, but coffee snob, I guess, but not as bad as I have seen from some people. Would you rather have a bad cup of coffee or no cup of coffee at all? Uh, no cup. No cup. Okay. Yeah, there's just, I'd, I don't want to drink. I spend too much time buying coffee, roasting coffee, and sourcing coffee, and training people not to drink shitty coffee. Like, that's that. You know, and I think one of the best, one of the unrealized things, I think, that coffee gave was the ability that coffee's taken us all over the world. Literally, not just like Colombia or Brazil. Central and South America, it's taken us to Africa. It's taken us to places in Asia. It's taken me to get hired as a, as a consultant to set up roasting protocols and training protocols in China. So I lived in China because of coffee. I went to Russia because of coffee. It's, you know, Alicia went to Rwanda and Burundi and got to go on, you know, a safari. Like, Crazy. There's not a lot of people yeah. that I, I do know of, of a handful of people that travel, but I know a handful of people that have gone on safari. Everyone, like, that's a thing. Like, I would love to do that. You always hear, oh, I wish I could have done that. Coffee, yeah. the, the path that we chose within coffee has allowed and afforded us that. I mean, I've been going back and forth working in China since 2008. 
That's incredible. I still have, I mean, my visa is good for another three years by working visa. So it, it's it's been incredible. It's been absolutely incredible. So we, estab- we, we established that I can't be a partner in any future Coffee Lab endeavor. Sounds like you travel a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> You work with your wife, yep. partner. Uh, clearly, she could sit out one of these trips. She has, she has. She and I could be back. like a plus one, maybe. Yeah, totally could, maybe. totally could. We've taken a lot of people on to Origin. We got the, we got the trip planned. Me, me volunteering. We're going in. Uh, I'll carry your grinder. Going in June. Come to Columbia with us. Oh, I would. I would. He's not serious, but I would. That's I what would everyone go. says they would, but... And I say, well, I would. book the flight. Come with us. I would. I would book the flight. But only if I feel. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Next time we'll be in Colombia and do this. <laughs>